Hey friends, welcome to my channel. I'm Amanda Muse, and I just discovered that yesterday, so when you're watching this, two days ago was World Mental Health Day. And as you know, on my channel, I talk a lot about mental health, whether it's just doing the day-to-day -day life, like normalizing normal existence with up and downs. I also talk about my experience using antidepressants. I have a whole playlist on that. I will link it up here or else in the comments below. I talk about just panic attacks, just just being a human in the earth, right? And so what I thought today, what I would share is my love of podcasting. So from the title of this video, I'm gonna be sharing 10 podcasts that you might wanna binge in 2023. I've noticed that probably for the last five or six years, I've shared at least one video a year with some of my favorite podcasts of that season. And I thought I haven't done one this year, so I'm coming at you with it. I'm gonna chit chat here for a minute, so check the timestamps below if you wanna skip right ahead to number one. You're not interested in this chit chat. No problem, I'm not offended, just head on over there. But for those who, like me, maybe experience some of that anxiety that can creep into our lives every now and then, whether it's a certain season, or a moment, or work, or families, or all of the above, it happens. I do find as well that as a mom, sometimes we can be just overstimulated by a lot going on in the house. So when my kids have friends over, or if there's just like a lot of people here, not guests, like not my guests, but just like everybody home, you know, Dean, my husband travels for work, but like when everybody's here and I have to do cleaning or I have things to do, I can feel a little overwhelmed. It seems to just really calm me down and just it like tames my energy. So that works for me, it may work for you. A couple of things that I really love. I don't have them in my pockets, but I actually have two sets of AirPods, two different generations. Uh, I love them. And the second thing I typically use is my iPhone. And there are a lot of different podcast players, but I found that even though I pay for Spotify, I love Apple Podcasts. It's just what I like to use. I like my library. It just seems to work for me. So those are the items that I use to listen to podcasting. You can also attach your Bluetooth to your car. I listen to them when I go on long drives. It's just less of a commitment in terms of something audio. I know audio doesn't work for everybody, but like listening to an audio book for me is quite the undertaking, is really quite a commitment. Where podcasting, it's like bite size. Well, enough chatter, let's move on to my 10 podcasts. As I open my iPad to get to my list, I will say that, like I said, I have many videos since like I think 2018, where I at least have one annual video where I share my top 10 favorite podcasts. And I was trying to make sure that I did not have repeats. However, what I wanted to do was be honest about some podcasts that I'm still listening to all of these years later. So I am gonna filter some of those in, um, but some of these may be new to you, all of them may be new to you. And I do wanna say, if you have favorite podcasts, please list them below. The first one I have definitely mentioned before, but it's Dateline. Coming back to my point about why I listen to podcasting, oftentimes it's to kind of regulate my energy, to bring my anxiety down, and Dateline just hits all of those boxes. They always catch the bad guy in the end, like 99% of the time. You have a resolution to the story. It seems to follow a similar pattern. Their voices are very comforting to me. They're like the right length you know, 45 minutes to an hour and a half as I'm cleaning the house and doing laundry, it takes me through that super boring task. And they don't go into too much gory details about the crime story. They touch a little bit on the victim, they talk about the perpetrator, their storyline. It's not just like gore and drama, because I'm just not into that. It's a solid contender and I've listened to it for years. And honestly, if you were to look into my podcast right now, I am up to date. Like I've listened to all of them. I need them to come out more frequently, honestly. Number two is a podcast called Happier with Gretchen Rubin. Now she's written a few books, she is an author, and this podcast she hosts with her sister. I love their dynamic, and I just love the flow of the show. They drop these little tidbits, these little nuggets about you know self-awareness, self-development. It's a little bit of self-help style, but not so in your face and pushy. I do notice that I have these rebel tendencies, which P.S., if you've listened to Gretchen Rubin, you'll know what I mean. She has this really interesting personality test. Uh, check out the podcast, check out her links, it's fascinating. Um, and so I've learned a lot about myself by listening to her. But she helps you with your personality type, figure out little things and little hacks that will work for your life and I actually find I put a lot of them into practice. So it's just enough that it's not preachy, it's entertaining, they have great guests, their banter is hilarious, I quite like it. 
My third show has been a real favorite of mine for many years. A friend of mine recommended this years ago, and it's called Crime Junkie. They are two friends, and the dynamic is that one of them tells a story, and the other one is commentary, and they're childhood friends. And what's been so fascinating over the years as I've continued to listen to the show is that they have grown and developed so much as their audience has. So they have far more funding, far more Patreon followers, and they've actually been able to take the money that they've earned and generate and apply it to help solve cold cases, which is fascinating. The one thing I will mention is that unlike Dateline, a lot of these stories do not have that comforting resolution. And that can be a little like, it leaves you hanging, you know what I mean? However, as they tell these cold cases, because coming back to this is one of their main focuses is like, how can we solve some of these cold cases, which by the way, have a lot to do with minorities, women, stories that maybe wouldn't get the right amount of airtime, they are bringing them to the surface and shedding light on them, which is fascinating. And they also do follow-ups. So I'm part of their Patreon, one of the tiers, and occasionally there'll be updates on cases, shows they did last year that all of a sudden they found the killer. And it's just fascinating what they've been able to do. And also just really fun from a business perspective, seeing someone in this industry really grow and develop and like kick ass female energy. You know what I mean? So I really love supporting that duo. Okay, so those are three that I have mentioned in the past. This next one is a new show to me, and it's called Wiser Than Me with Julia Louis-Dreyfus. You may recognize that name. She was a main character in Seinfeld. And this podcast, I just was so excited when I learned about it. Basically, from what I understand, is that Julia was watching Julia like we go way back. Anyway, she was watching a documentary, I think it was on Jane Fonda, and she was just commenting like how inspiring Jane Fonda is, and even as she gets older and ages in an industry that wants women to disappear, she continues to shine bright, share her story, and just be freaking phenomenal. And as she started to let this idea percolate, like, where are all these incredible women going? Like there are so many women that have been around in industry, whether they're writers, activists, fashion designers, actors, you know, let's talk about them, let's celebrate them. And so she has women come on her show that are wiser than her. They typically tend to be a little older. And I am obsessed with older people. I'm obsessed with the idea that we celebrate people as they age instead of hiding them away. People have so much to offer as they age. They've been around a long time. Let's lean into some of that experience. Let them share that wisdom with us. And so it just checks all sorts of boxes for me. I'm also a huge fan of celebrating women. It's like fundamentally part of who I am to celebrate women and their stories. And so this podcast is like, oh my God, I love it so much. I wish I could be in a room with these women. I love the questions at the end when she's like, you know, what would you tell a younger version of yourself? What would you tell 20 year old you? It's just wonderful. I love, love, love that kind of storytelling. Okay, so this next story comes with a trigger warning. It is called The Retrievals. Now, I don't want to give you too much information about it, but I will say it's a five-part series, and I'm pretty sure it was produced by Serial. So if you're a podcasting fan, like Serial was like the OG podcast that took over all of our lives a couple years ago. Uh, but The Retrievals follows the story of a few women who are at Yale Medical Center, I could be getting some of the words wrong, and they are all on this mission to become mothers through IVF. And there's something that happens, and it's a true story, but like I said, big trigger warning for medical malpractice when it comes to women. And if you are someone who perhaps is struggling with your fertility or you've been through fertility treatments and it's just like a trauma you don't wanna go back to, skip this one. I found it traumatic and I did not experience IVF or fertility issues, so keep that in mind. It will make you so mad. You may come back here and be like, damn it. You know, like that was triggering just because, oh my God, women need to be believed in the medical field. So you've been warned, but it'll blow your mind. We're gonna switch gears. This one's gonna make you feel real good. So this next show is called How We Live Now by Catherine May. Catherine May is the author of a few books and one of them is potentially one of my most favorite books called Wintering. I listened to the audiobook version. It was like 
a warm hug on a chilly day. You're sitting by a fire. You hear the crackle of the wood. You have like a little London fog, one of my favorite hot drinks, sitting beside you, curled up with a cozy book and a dog or a cat, your preferred animal. That's the vibe, okay, that Catherine May gives off with wintering. Well, in this podcast, it follows a similar flow. First of all, her voice. She's British. I love accents. I'm a huge fan of audio and sound. I just appreciate that element of life, and so she just does that really well. Even her intros, there's this beautiful immersive feeling with how she introduces each episode. She's often outside. Sometimes you'll hear the crunching of leaves under her feet, depending on what time of year it is, or the, you know, the slam of a not a loud one, but like the closing of a screen door. And it's so good. Like, I love people who take the time to make that sound good. It feels very artsy, very folk-like. The conversations are very much like those soft conversations. And I really enjoy it, so worth checking out. We're switching gears again. Listen, we are humans, we are multifaceted with many interests. So this next podcast falls into the crime genre and it's red-handed. I do love crime stories, right? I know so many of them at this point. I could probably be part of a game show and like win just by hearing like elements of the crime, which I can't decide if it's like something I should be proud of or like, do I have trauma? Well, I definitely have trauma. Okay, story for another day. But the point is, I like true crime. It relaxes me. I know that that's not the greatest accolade. Like I've heard a lot of people with trauma um, <laughs> find comfort in crime stories. If you've been here long enough, that won't surprise you. However, Red Handed, what I like about it, it's a duo, it's two women. They've got this scrappy energy. They're from the UK. They just give the vibe that like they started from the bottom, now they're here. You know what I mean? Like they have been working hard, they hustle. I've been listening for quite a long time. It's been wonderful to see them grow. They win year after year, like I think three consecutive years now, they've won the Listener's Choice Awards for the British whatever awards, like, I don't know, I'm in Canada, but I'm proud of them. And I think it's amazing. And it's kind of like you're supporting the underdog, they're hustling hard, and their storytelling is wonderful. They do intense research on these stories. So the episodes are a little longer, again, which I appreciate, especially when I'm doing all of my boring housework. Like I literally hate housework. These ladies make it better. They go through some stories I've never heard of, not necessarily the most like current stories, not like Dateline where they're like snapping out videos all the time. These women go into, you know, things happened 50 years ago, 40 years ago. And then sometimes they do three part series they even have subscriber um, bonuses, like if you're part of Wondery and that kind of thing, which I don't subscribe to, but if you are, there's these extra shows that you can listen to. Number eight, we're switching gears again. So this one's called Huberman Lab. I feel like I'm just a little late to the uptake on this one. Like so many people have been raving about this show for so long. So Huberman, Dr. Huberman, is he a doctor? I think so. Anyway, he is um, a neuroscientist and he teaches at one of the universities. I wish I knew, but... I'm sure he says it in the intro. Um, and he is like <laughs> not the most, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like he's not like a colorful, bright, no, he is bright, like bright, but not like shiny person. I hope he doesn't watch this. He's handsome as hell. Like he does it for me. I'm just throwing it out there. I like really smart men. Whew. But um, very attracted to the brain. You know what I mean? but literally he is a neuroscientist. So he knows so much about the brain and it feels like a university lecture in the best possible way um, where you can push pause <laughs> and come back to it when you're ready. I will warn you that the episodes are long, like two and a half hours sometimes. That is not something I listen to all in one go. It can be a lot. They are not all interesting to me, honestly. Not all of the episodes I catch. There are some that are amazing. Like I discovered Dr. Sarah Gottfried on there. If you listen to my last video where I was sharing some of my like women's health information, my almost 40 video, um, I was sharing pills I take before I go to bed now to help me with perimenopause. Like learned all of that from Huberman Lab. So he has some fascinating guests. I find the episodes I really, really enjoy are particular to women's health, to sleep, to nutrition, to mental health. I mean, he covers a lot of ground. 
And one of the things he says in the intro of his show is that he wants to make this information accessible to the public. Like, not everybody can afford to go to school, not everybody has the means to do that or just take time away from their life to do that. And this information, he wants everybody to know. So I love that. Accessibility is amazing. Two more shows. This one I've definitely mentioned before, but it's worth bringing up. It's called Heavyweight. I mentioned this back in, I believe, 2018. Heavyweight is a show by a man named Jonathan Goldstein. And I just, I've said this before, but there's something so comforting about him. He is this guy originally from Montreal. He's Jewish. I just, I grew up around a lot of Jewish people. I, there's just an energy. Even the way he speaks, I find really comforting. Um, and some of the things he'll make reference to, I'm like, oh, I know about that. Like, I'm from Quebec. I get it. So I really, really like that. Oh, and he doesn't live in Quebec anymore, but neither here nor there. I just like his delivery. There's a comedic element to how he speaks. And the concept of the show is that there are some things that we carry with us through life that become a heavy weight. They weigh heavy on us. And he wants to help people kind of like release the load a little. You know, there'll be stories where somebody had an encounter with a friend 20 years ago and they've always thought about that moment or that person and they lost touch and they're just looking to reconnect and they've never been able to find them or something. They're not on Facebook. Where are they? Well, he'll do the legwork to find the person and then reconnect them. He has a way of telling stories that feel very raw and relatable and I don't know why, but I find myself almost moved to tears with every episode because it hits you that despite us being so different, despite us all having these different lives, we have these fundamental similarities as human beings about connection and he has a way of just like simmering away the BS to elevate this message. And it's really beautiful. So just a beautiful show, well produced. There's like funny banter at the beginning with his childhood friend. He's always bothering her. It's fun, it's fun. Give it a listen. And last but not least, of course, like I said, these are in no particular order. Did I say that? Now I'm saying it. But number 10 is a show called A Little Bit Culty. I feel like I should have mentioned this before. I. I feel like maybe I did, but this show is such a great show. So love me some cult information. Cults are having their moment right now. I love hearing about them. I love hearing people's experiences, whether they've been in a cult, are they out of the cult? But the two hosts, they're actually a married couple, Sarah and Nippy, and they are people that happen to have been in the cult called Nexium. So Nexium, I mean, that was plastered all over the news, also known as the SEX cult, but that's not really what that cult was. It's not what they signed up for. And that's the thing. What they do is they normalize that people don't join a cult, people join a good thing. Like, what did you think you were joining? What did it become? What were the baby steps that led to you feeling like you couldn't leave or that coercion happened or all of these things? And it's super fascinating to me how the brain is somewhat malleable and with the right persuasion and influence, like, just bizarre things can unfold. And so I find it super fascinating. Love it. Hands down, a podcast I listen to weekly every time there's a new episode. And, and their banter is great and they have wonderful guests. Big fan of the show. And that's it. So those are my 10 podcasts I've been loving this year, 2023. I hope you enjoyed this. If you like this video and you're curious about other podcasts you want to add to your library, I will link a playlist for you. Now, some of the podcasts I was going back in the history books, some are no more, right? Some podcasts kind of live for a season and that's the end of it. <clears throat> like my own podcast. Um, and since we're here, if you've lasted this long, I do have my own podcast called Friendo. I produced this show for many years and I found that, you know, last year, 2022, um, it just became a little bit too much to manage it all. So you're welcome to go back and listen to it. It's called Friendo. All of the episodes are still available. And I always dabble with the idea of bringing it back and I just may. Uh, maybe convince me in the comments if I should. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for being here. Subscribe if you're new, and I will catch you next week with a brand new video. Bye, guys.